Joining us now via Skype with more on the midterm election results is former ambassador in Washington and expert on the United States-Israel relations and the Middle East, Yoram Ettinger. Ambassador, thank you for being with us today. Thank you. All right, so first, let's start off, you know, with a Republican Senate and a Democratic House of Representatives. Uh, you know, what do you predict the future of American politics is going to look like? Well, uh, first of all, uh, we should compare it to the track record of midterm election in 1994. Clinton, as president, suffered a resounding defeat, losing 54 seats in the House for the Democrats and losing six seats in the Senate. Obama lost in, nine, in 2010. He lost 63 seats in the House and nine seats in the Senate. And therefore, a loss of roughly 25, maybe up to 30 uh, uh, seats in the House during uh, Trump's first midterm, but gaining, gaining a few seats in the Senate, maybe three, maybe up to uh, five. This is, uh, relatively speaking, a semi-successful midterm election for Trump. The result will be that uh, his room of maneuverability will be slightly constrained by the House. However, due to the control of the Senate, he will be able to appoint many more federal judges, maybe one or two more uh, Supreme Court justices. He will be able to change members of the cabinet without being concerned but, about the majority in the Senate. But I'm, uh, and my question with that is that with the power to subpoena uh, you know, more appointees and to really take a, a deeper look at Trump's aides. Do you, see, do you see that this next few years might look like a lame duck presidency? Well, again, as I said, uh, the, the Democrats may choose to turn the life of the president into a miserable experience. Uh, however, there is a price to be uh, paid for that. Will it make, uh, uh, will it render him uh, an ineffective president, well, it will make it more difficult for him to face effectively the Ayatollahs, Russia, China, uh, ISIS, other forms of terrorism. It will make his conduct of foreign and national security policy much more difficult, but all that, all that will exert a very severe price from the U.S. as a whole, from the population in America as a whole, and that may exert a very severe price for the Demo from the Democrats during the next cycle in 2020. I see. All right, now let's move on to some of the Democratic candidates who recently won. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous article, there, there are three uh, specific candidates that won, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Ilan Omar, and Rashida Tlaib, who are viewed, at least by many in the Jewish community, as hostile towards, uh, towards you know, Jews in the diaspora and or Israel. What, well, the, how, how would you respond to that? Th there's no doubt that we lost some very powerful uh, friends, the chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, the chairwoman of the subcommittee on the Middle East, and many other uh, such friends in the House, especially in the Senate. In return, yes, uh, for the first time, there are two Muslim ladies who make their anti-Israel views very, very uh, public. And there are a few more uh, unfriendly additions to the House. However, they belong to a very small group in the House. For instance, the next chairman of the House International Relations Committee would be Congressman Elliot Engel, who has been an adamant supporter of enhanced U.S.-Israel relations. The next chairman of the subcommittee on the Middle East will be Congressman Ted Deutsch, who is very, very much publicly appreciative of the Israeli contribution to America's national security and economy. And it seems to me that all signs suggest that Congress, both chambers, will continue being the most steady and effective base of support for Israel's uh, ties with the U.S. In, the, in Washington and anywhere in the world. 
All right, Ambassador Edinger, it's, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us again today. Thank you.